Hi, Melanie. Hi, Kristen. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Happy February. I know. Yeah. <laughs> January was January was kind of long. Oh, the longest ever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it wasn't just me. <laughs> no. Uh. So where is everyone? Do we have a list of members and contact information and all that? Do we have that? You will, you you, you do in your original handbook that was oh. provided to you. <laughs> yeah, that old school binder. <laughs> yeah, um, oh. but don't worry. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's changes in the membership, obviously, as we start a new year with um, elections having taken place last year. So. Uh, there will be an updated roster sent out to all committee members probably by the end of this month. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, and we have Nina. Okay, great. And Lisa, whenever you are ready, just let me know. Okay. Oh, we have enough people? Actually, no, we're, we're still shy. I apologize. I should have, let's see. Oh, no. You, you have four. That's have a four. quorum. So you could start the meeting, but I would recommend waiting a few more minutes if you don't mind. We actually have uh, two more minutes till 3.30, so. Okay. I hope no one's having an issue trying to get on. Um, we have um, other people who've signed on and I checked the, the link in the agenda, so they should be okay. 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 So are we ready, Eileen? Um, we, we can start now if you'd like, yes. Okay. Let's go ahead. I call this meeting to order. Due to the provisions of the governor's executive orders in 2520 and in 2920, which suspend certain requirements of the Brown Act and the order of the health officer of the, of the County of Sonoma to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19, the Art and Public Places Committee will be conducting today's meeting in virtual setting using Zoom webinar. Committee members and staff are participating from, lo from remote locations and are practicing appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during item, num item three, public comments, or during the public hearing items will be able to do so by utilizing the raise hand feature or by pressing star nine on their phone. Then they will be giving the ability to address the committee. The recording secretary will take roll. Lisa Fuentes? Here. Kristen Kiefer? Here. And, and, and I'm going to ask you, how do you pronounce your last name? Oh, oh uh, you are muted right now. Baumgartner? Uh, let the record reflect that Anne is here. I'm here. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've lost all of a sudden. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Melanie jones card. Carter. Here. Jeff Nathanson. Here. Um, let the record reflect that uh, Nathan Adzerian is not present. And um, the rest of, and Monica Bryant is also not present. So before we get to the agenda, Tara would like to make an announcement. Tara. Thank you, Lisa, um, Chair Puentes, and members of Art and Public Places Committee. Before we dive into the agenda, I would like to take a moment and acknowledge Nina Bonos as her term ended recently. 
I want to thank her for her over eight years of service on the committee, including five years as committee chair, and recognize her support of arts in the community, her sp per perspective as a working artist, and her astute attention to detail, all of which were apparent through her work on this committee. So on behalf of the Public Art Program and the City of San Rosa, we want to send her our sincere gratitude. Thank you, Nina. I would also like to introduce I would also like to introduce a new member, Ann Baumgartner, who um, was recently appointed by Vice Mayor Natalie Rogers. Ann, I would like to take this opportunity just for a few moments to let you introduce yourself to um, the members of the committee, and we will get to know each other uh, as we move forward um, through our work together. Thank you. Right. Um, it's great to be here. I am a relatively new member, I mean, new resident of Santa Rosa. We moved here in the summer of 2019, the end of the summer, and then started into a kind of tumultuous uh, beginning with the fires and then rolling right into COVID. So um, it's been a, we came from Los Angeles and I'm a working artist. I'm also a teacher. I have taught everything from little kids to um, adjunct faculty at a couple different universities. Um, public art and social practice are a, kind of a private sort of um, interest of mine, as well as lots of other kinds of um, public and community ma making events. So besides the own, my own work I do in a studio. So um, this is really exciting to get to be part of this in a new town and um, in my new home. So thanks. Welcome. Mm. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. <laughs> Next up up on the agenda, public comments. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raise hand button. If you are dialing via telephone, please press star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speakers and viewers. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you're invited to do so. Your microphone will be muted at the end of the countdown. Do we have any comments from the public who wish to make comments on the art in public places Items that are not on the agenda, comments will be heard on specific agenda items at the time it's called. Yeah, Fuentes, we have no raised hands at this time. Okay, great. Thank you, Eileen. Um, let's see here. Okay, so moving on to um, approval of minutes. Copies of the December 14th, 2020 meeting minutes have been distributed for your review. Are there any additional additions or corrections to the minutes? If not, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as written? No move. move to... <laughs> okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting minutes approved as written. Moving on to the next item on the agenda. Scheduled items, number five. 5.1 Fifth Street Parking Garage Public Art Project. David will present the draft project plan and draft um, RFQ for the Fifth Street Parking Garage and Public Art Project. The project was approved through FI um, 2018 through 2019 annual work plan and includes funding from the parking, parking division. Um, David? Hey Lisa, uh, hello APPC members. Can everyone hear me okay? Uh, my name is David Ward. I'm the Public Art Project Manager with the City of Santa Rosa. Uh, today I'm here to present the project plan and RFQ for the Fifth Street Garage Public Art Project. Um, you have all received these two documents along with today's uh, meeting agenda, and I'm going to be providing an overview of the project and calling attention to a few key items in both documents. Um, after presenting both documents, we can take questions or comments about any information presented and about the project in general. Um, we will first look at the project plan, which is a template that we use for all city public art projects to outline the project structure and lays out the roadmap of the project's process. Um, the RFQ will mostly be a duplicate of the same information. However, this document is designed for um, um, or internal use, uh, whereas the RFQ presents the same information for public consumption and external use. Um, so diving into the public plan, or project plan, excuse me, 
Uh, the brief history of the Fifth Street Garage is that it was built in 1982 and serves the northeast section of downtown Santa Rosa. Uh, the garage has five floors dedicated to parking and contains a total of 708 vehicle spaces. Um, as uh, Chair Puentes uh, just mentioned, um, in 2018-2019 fiscal year, APPC uh, approved this project as part of the annual plan, which uh, directed funds from both the Public Art Fund and the Parking Division um, towards this project. Um, the project description is for an artist or artist team to design, fabricate, and install site-specific public art on the Fifth Street parking garage in downtown Santa Rosa on the exterior southwest corner of the structure facing Orchard and Fifth Streets. Um, the goal of this project is to draw positive attention to and increase the use of the Fifth Street Garage, which is often not known to the public. The art will distinguish the garage from nearby structures, serve as a wayfinding element through identification, and draw uh, people to the site. This opportunity is an open call to artists aimed at Northern California artists and more specifically encouraging local Sonoma County artists to apply. The site location is the southwest corner of the Fifth Street parking garage in downtown Santa Rosa on the exterior facing wall adjacent to Orchard and Fifth, uh, which the RFQ provides photos of the project's dimensions and um, its quote canvas. Um, the, uh, like most uh, city public art projects, um, staff will be working with a selection panel and the APPC through the process to identify and select one artist or artist team for this project. Uh, the selection panel, which will consist of seven members total, including two APPC members, two arts professionals, one representative from the City of Santa Rosa Parking Division, and one representative from the Downtown Action Organization, um, and they will be responsible or will um, for selecting one artist or artist team for the project to recommend to the APPC. Um, the APPC's role will be to be responsible for approving the final artist and artwork selection recommended by the selection panel. Um, a description of the artist selection components is outlined below there, um, and the selection criteria follows the city's basic format and requirements. Um, the unique items for this project are mainly the budget and site uh, location considerations. The project will utilize an RFQ to identify artist uh, candidates for the project. And from there, three finalists will be paid honorariums upon submitting an RFP. Uh, the project budget is a total of $25,000 uh, total of that. 15,000 uh, is allocated from the parking division and 10,000 from the public art fund. Um, I wanted to point out the total budget and artist budgets are different um, and that's due to um, artist honorariums are, are accounted for in the total budget and other site preparation contingency. Um, and those aren't part of the $20,000 um, artist budget which is an all inclusive design and construction budget that's noted in the RFQ. Um, timeline review. Uh, if approved today, uh, the RFQ will be published a week from today on February 8th uh, with an application deadline of March 15th. The tentative timeline maps out an artist selection made by July 5th and has installation and project completion by February 2022. Uh, this timeline is subject to change at any time throughout the project's process. Um, and that's about it for the project plan. Um, On to the RFQ. Um, as I previously mentioned, this document contains the same information as the project plan document, although it's designed for external use for applicants and for the public. Um, I do want to call out that on page two of the RFQ, um, there's visual aids of the project site um, and approximate canvas dimensions. Um, and also on the uh, last page of the RFQ document, which is page four, uh, we have outlined the project's expectations for applicants and for the selected artist when we eventually get there. Um, and in the final section, we have included the application process and deliverables, which are standard for most all city public art projects. Um, and I believe that's all the material I have for you today. And I think we can move on to questions and comments. Thanks, David. Do any of the committee members have questions for David regarding this item? 
If so, please raise, physically raise your hand. And this is a time just for questions, no discussion. Kristen? Like Melanie has her hand up. Oh, there, oh, Melanie. Did okay. you mean the raise hand thing? E not you raise know, either my or, hand. Melanie. <laughs> That's fine. Go ahead. Okay. So I had, I just had a question about the budget. So, I mean, it's broken down, but does the artist have discretion to use the funds how they so see fit? Um, in the RFQ document, we have, uh, we have the basic components uh, broken down for the artist budget of that $20,000 that I had just mentioned. Um, so yes, there's contingency written out in there. Um, and then there's also... Um, artist payment is written in there too, but it is an all-inclusive design and construction budget. Um, I don't know if that answers your question all the way, Melanie. So, so on the, I, I shared on the screen there that section that the artist fee, um, mm -hmm. these are the guidelines for the use of the funds. So the artist fee, 20% is 4,000. Fabrication and installation, 70%, that's 14,000. A contingency of 10% is 2,000. Other than that, yes, it's up to the artist how that's broken down and when they submit their, the, the, the uh, finalists who are invited to submit um, proposals will um, have to submit a detailed line item budget when they submit their proposal. Okay, so if an artist submits something saying that their fee is gonna be $5,000 and they only need you know, $10,000 for the application and installation, they would okay. still be within the, okay, that was my question, thank you. Oh, thanks, like Melanie. Anne, Anne? Um, is Sorry. tell me about the, the choosing the three finalists. Are you looking at their portfolio? Are you looking for them to have similar work in their portfolio? Or are you actually just looking at general vibe and style? And you know, where do you, how is that funneling from a lot of artists to the three? Yeah, um, so it'll be staff, um, city staff will pre-screen applications to make sure that they have um, submitted all the correct deliverables that we ask for. Um, and it, under the selection considerations and our art, um, artist qualifications, it maps out um, generally what we're looking for, um, for originality and um, other components of that will rate their um, qualification. But um, we'll leave that up to the discretion of the selection panel to filter through um, what they deem to hit the project goals and um, match the site um, to the best of the artist's abilities. Yeah, thanks. Anyone else? Cool. Nathan? Jeff? Jeff. Oh, Jeff. Sorry, <laughs> I just fine. saw Nathan. And I just cause... just call me Nate. That, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> there is already um, a Nathan. Sorry about that, Jeff. Yeah, that's no no problem. Uh, what was my question? Oh, yeah. Um, have so has the selection panel been um, decided upon yet? I... No. Okay. Not at the moment. Just... All right. Just curious. Anyone else? I did have a question. My question was, um, you want to specifically Northern California and putting some emphasis on Sonoma County. You want to definitely keep that. When we're talking about Northern California, what are we, how broad is that? Uh, Tara, did you want to chime in? Sure. Um, you know, I think that there's there's kind of an understanding of Northern California being like the Bay Area and North. Um, I think that we're looking more for the the restriction of eligibility is really in place based on the budget amount in this case because there's not a huge amount of budget to spend on travel expenses. Um, in fact, there's really no specific allocation for travel. So by doing that, we are hoping to cast a broad enough net to attract artists um, who would be a good fit for this project, but um, specifically hoping that there are some local artists that can make this work given um, the the lack of, of budget for travel. Okay. That is, thank you, Tar. Okay, so let's move it on. Eileen, do we have any public comments regarding this item? 
Uh, Chair Fuentes, we have no raised hands at this time. Okay. Thank you, Eileen. Is there a motion to approve this project plan and RFQ? I'll move to approve the project plan. And the RFQ? And the RFQ, yes. Okay. Do I have a second? Is there time for discussion before seconding? Or after, after after seconding. Okay, I will second. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's discuss if we have we can have a discussion about this. And it's a so any go for it, Kristen. Real quick, I just wanted to acknowledge city staff uh, that this the the project plan and RFQ is is written in a way that it's very um, you know you you can choose what is um, worthwhile and how to re respond to it appropriately. So I, I appreciate the open ended um, ability to you know pick whether you want five photos of previous work or ten photos. You know there is a range for how um, how these artists uh, will will submit their, their qualifications. So I do appreciate that and wanted to say that I am very excited for artwork to uh, beautify this spot. This is a, an under noticed, I, I don't think that's normally a term, but it's an under noticed part of our, our city infrastructure. So I'm all for beautifying it. Can I ask another question? Yes, it, Anne? It, it has, it has did the project come out of seeing other things like this that people actually thought seemed like this would be a great fit for our city? Like, is there any kind of idea of what might come or is just wide open? Yeah, I think that we're very, we're very wide open, but um, I have had a lot of conversations with the city's parking manager, Kim Nadeau. Um, she is uh, very excited about adding public art to garages. As you know, we have public art on some of our garages already, um, most noticeably probably are the art start murals on several of the garages, um, front and back sides. Um, and then there's also an installation on the transit mall side of the first street parking garage, as well as a mural adjacent to the front of that garage. So anyway, there, there's been a lot of support for public art on our garages so far. And um, through conversations with Kim and through the funding that um, the parking division allocated for this project, we are really excited to work with her uh, on it. And I'll say that both of us keep our eye out for parking garage projects to send each other for inspiration. Um, so we've seen things that I think you may have seen in other cities that are kind of like wind um, activated sculptural type things, um, murals, um, sculptural elements that are lit or that are actual light sculptures themselves. So there's a variety of things that I think are possible with this project, but um, we did not prescribe anything specific in this RFQ to specifically invite artists to bring their creativity to the project. Nice, great, excellent. Okay, Kristen? Oh, you're on mute, Kristen. Thank you, sorry. I, no. if, um, I will pass if other members who haven't spoken yet want to speak first. I just wanted to ask about the, uh, the location or, or how that side of the parking garage was decided upon as the appropriate location. Um, I can try to answer that. I think um, David and I met with Kim and a parking supervisor down on the site um, recently and this location has some um, elements that I think are attractive for this type of project, uh, but not um, that that doesn't exclude other parts of the garage for potential future projects. Um, we noticed that when we were down there that there are other areas that could also um, be addressed in the future as um, funding or uh, other resources allow. So um, this corner in particular is the corner that you may see from more of the heart of the downtown, like from walking from Courthouse Square. Um, it is a place where you can see from the intersection of B, uh, sorry, D and 4th Streets, which is a pretty busy intersection for pedestrians so, um, and, and, and vehicles. So I guess those were some of the considerations. The other considerations were um, the whole frontage on 5th Street of this parking garage currently has, I think, like what, six or seven very large redwood trees. 
um, and that really blocks that facade frontage view. And so this corner is just adjacent to that, but visible and not blocked by the trees. Um, so those are some of the things we've talked about. Thanks, Tara. Jeff. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if, even though this is um, completely open-ended, and I, I sort of like that idea that we're looking to artists to bring their creativity, there are certain priorities that have been identified in the guidelines for some of the other projects, and I'm particularly thinking about how we approach the um, old Courthouse Square public art project that we just completed and uh, certain principles that we, we thought were important, a uh, sense of place, um, community, um, and, uh, you know, there, a sense of history of, of the location. You know, there, there are these certain things that um, we're oftentimes looking to public art to try to bring to a particular site or to the community. Um, so are there, are there guidelines for the um, review panelists that might address that? Or are there any guidelines that should be specifically stated for artists to consider that might be prioritized in terms of how these, pro these proposals are ranked? Yeah, I can, I can try to address that. I think that um, in this case, the primary goal for this project, as we identified working with the parking division, was to draw that positive attention to this parking garage. Um, and so, you know, the, there aren't quite the same breadth of goals as there were for the Courthouse Square project we're not necessarily asking or expecting an artist to engage the community in the same way either. So, um, you know, the criteria that are listed in the RFQ and in the project plan really focus on the other, the other elements that we um, kind of score proposals on or score submissions on. But when they're talking about how they address the goals, we're specifically addressing how did the artist approach the kind of identification of this parking garage, the wayfinding element, the kind of this is a parking garage kind of um, of uh, identification. So that that was the primary goal that raised to the top. Without, uh, like I said, without being overly prescriptive about other types of themes that should come into the project. Great, thank you. Thanks, Tara. Thanks, Jeff. Um, do we have any other? Questions for discussion? Okay. I do have one. Oh. It's may, maybe it's a yes. statement, I don't know. But it's you fine, know, we really. talked a lot about um, diversity and um, within our community. So I, I would hope that um, somehow this could be, even though we're not saying this is what we want, but I hope that we have the committee, whoever it is, has an open mind about um, that being an option as well. It's something a little bit outside the box than the normal pretty things that we normally do. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Melody. I can't hear whoever that was. <laughs> that was me. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, anyone else? All right. So currently the motion on the table is to approve the project plan and the RFQ as presented. I would like to call a vote to approve the Fish Street project plan and RFQ as printed. Are all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? All right. The motion passes unanimously. Correct? Yes. Okay. So, next item on the agenda. Um, Chair Fuentes, oh. before you do that, um, we, we do not have any hands raised for public comment, but I just wanted to put that out that we do we need to check for that. But we're oh, for public right. comment after to the vote. She okay. called for it earlier, Eileen. I think oh, we're covered. I okay, that's okay. No, 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 that's okay. Should I do it after we vote or after uh, when, the, the item um, is, when the item is called? When, okay. Yeah, so after the, the traditional time for public comment on a specific agenda item is after committee members ask questions. 
Is that that's correct? I believe. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 Which you did. Which you did. We're good. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Let's see here. It's always good to clarify everything. So. Next item on the agenda, 5.2, the Sustriga plan. Members of Third Plateau, Plateau Consulting Team will present the final draft of, this, of the plan, outline the mission, vision, the Sustriga focus, and provide, and well, I'll let them go ahead and they're on. Do we have them on there, Eileen? Yeah, we're working on promoting everyone. So stand by just one second and we'll okay. have everyone come on and um, you'll remember Jeannie, Jonathan, and Maya, and Alex, and I believe Madeline's here. I think all of um, all of them presented to you previously uh, in in a time when we were getting feedback on this um, the the specific vision, mission, theory of change part of this plan. And now here we are. So uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Jonathan and the Third Plateau team, and they are going to take it from here. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for having us. It's great to see you all again. Uh, Member Bumgarner, congratulations on Hi. the appointment. It's good to meet you. you um, so we've got a number of people from the, the Third Plateau and Capital Impact team here. Um, we'd love just to do some quick introductions so that you know who everybody is and then we can dive in. So my name is Jonathan Kaufman. I'm one of the co-founders and principals at Third Plateau and have been um, spearheading a lot of the work um, with the city of Santa Rosa for the last several months. Um, why don't we go just around here. Jeannie, will you introduce yourself real quick? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, Jeannie Howell. I'm a senior director here at um, Third Plateau and been working with Tara and the committee and the team um, since about the beginning of the year um, and just looking forward to uh, seeing what's, uh, what's next. Wonderful. Thanks, Jeannie. Maya, you want to go next? Hi everyone, my name is Maya Kageyama. I'm a director at Third Plateau and I've been working with Tara, Raisa and the crew for the last few months especially to really pull the plan together. So it's great to be here today. Alex, with the, the background that's making all of us jealous, you wanna go next? <laughs> Hi everybody, Alex Tagavi and I'm a partner with Capital Impact and we're uh, in many ways a sister firm at Third Plateau and I've had the pleasure of supporting the team, particularly on the economic development pieces of the of the plan. Fantastic. And Madeline. Hi everyone. My name is Madeline Labasco and I'm a researcher with the Third Plateau team and been thankful to lead some of the learning in this process and I'm very excited to see what comes next. Wonderful. So um it's really great to get to be here with all of you and um, really represent a phenomenal amount of hard work that has gone into the document that you've seen. Uh, what I'd like to do is do a short little presentation to walk you through what's there and how we got to it. And then we can open up for some conversation and would love to hear what questions are on your mind and as you turn to implementation, what's, uh, what you're thinking about. Um, so we've had a, um, our process, we've worked with the, the city uh, and the public art program on a few different aspects. But the strategic planning work we've done um, really kicked into gear in beginning of July. Um, these three core phases. We spent the first several months um, over the summer just trying to learn everything we could. And when I say we, I don't mean Third Plateau and Capital Impact. I mean Third Plateau, Capital Impact, and the Steering Committee, which I'll, I'll show you the roster of here in just a second. But working very closely with, with Tara and Raisa and the rest of the um, some key stakeholders about really um, what's what's doable here. Um, lovely shout out here to member Jones Carter, who was one of our, our steering committee members as well. Um, so we did a lot of research to make sure that we were informed about really the context that we were operating in as a public art program. Um, working with the community, working with specific stakeholders, looking at trends of what other cities have done with their public art. And that got us into the fall and really thinking through, okay, now that we're informed, what do we want to do here in Santa Rosa? What's meaningful to us? What are some of those core goals that we have? What do we want to prioritize? And uh, through a couple of, of really dynamic retreats and several brainstorms afterwards, um, we got into an iterative design phase um, where we were really drafting documents, sharing it with key different stakeholder groups. Um, we came to all of you back in November or December with a draft for you to, to weigh in and take a look at some high level pieces the mission, the vision, the theory of change, um, and some core focal areas. 
And since that meeting, we've been working very closely with Tara and Raisa um, and, this, and the steering committee to really flesh out what the rest of that plan should look like. Specific actions and tactics, um, implementation timeline, some metrics, and eventually the expenditure plan. Um, in terms of the group that was working with us, Tara, you can go to the next slide there. Um, it's a roster here of all of our steering committee members. Um, coming up here in just a second. Yeah, sorry, working on it. It's not working no for me. So while you're waiting for oh, um, So the steering committee uh, consisted of a, a pretty good cross section of the stakeholders we're trying to engage. Um, so you'll see some specific names here in a second, but everything from city staff to artists, to local nonprofit leaders, uh, you know, arts, arts leaders here, as you can see our, our, our fearless committee. Um, and this committee really worked with us in the retreats to help process what we had learned in that learning phase, to identify some core areas that we maybe want to focus in, um, and then to really just provide a lot of critical feedback throughout the process. Um, probably the most, uh, most significant one was at a, a steering committee meeting back in December and really getting to like take a big step back from the plan, take a look at it holistically and start to identify, you know, where is this really strong and where does it still have some room to, um, to grow and, and um, probably better fulfill the ideals that it's, uh, it's trying to push. And then we got to work over the last month and a half to really uh, work that out. So the plan itself, Tari, you can go to the next one here. Um, plan itself is anchored on uh, our vision and our mission. And the, and the theory of change, which we talked about last time, but you can see how these have evolved a little bit. The vision is really the statement about what we're trying to build, the world we want to see. Um, this is not specific to the public art program. This is about the community we're trying to build, knowing there's lots of other city agencies and nonprofits and community leaders and for-profits that are all working towards building this as well. But where we landed was an empowered, thriving and inclusive Santa Rosa community connected through the power of art. Now we don't do, we can't do that alone. Um, that is a, the metaphor I like is that's the full puzzle that we're trying to build and everybody's bringing their own unique puzzle pieces. And we wanna get clear about what is that puzzle? And then what is the puzzle piece or puzzle pieces we bring to the table to help as the public art program? And that's really where our mission is. So we champion, we help bring that vision to life through by we champion artistic expression and amplify community voices through a diverse array of public art experiences. The theory of change that you can see in the, in the draft plan outlines how we think this comes about um, and how we start to take that, um, that mission and how that can eventually lead to that vision that we care about. So that's the biggest picture. Now the rest of the plan, if you get into the, the fiscal year 21 through fiscal year 24 goals, this is where we're gonna focus in the next three and a half years to make sure that we are being as productive and effective as possible towards that vision. And our committee ended up with five core fo uh, focal points here. So the first one, diverse, diverse voices are represented, included and celebrated within the programming process, outreach and infrastructure of the public art program. This is really trying to embrace the moment and recognize sort of where we've been strong and where we need to get better and where we need to really address some shortcomings as a, as a, as a community and how we can really diversify whose voices are being amplified and being supported and brought into the public art conversation. Um, I'll talk about each of these in a little bit more detail here in a second. Second one is that neighborhoods are infused with art and community leaders across the city champion arts programming. So it's really trying to see a much more broad coalition moving this agenda and this, uh, this movement around public art. Three, public art is funded and maintained as a core component of placemaking and economic development. So really owning where we sit within the, um, the structure of the city within economic development and understanding what is our role as part of that, um, as part of that division. Four, the public art program and the Art and Public Places Committee um, are rightfully seen as positive and familiar and as key assets in and for the community, right? This is saying, let's stop being such, uh, like we don't, we don't wanna be background noise. We wanna be in the conversation. We want people to know who we are, how they can leverage us and our resources to help further their agendas 
and how we can really um, just be a, a stronger partner in the community. And fifth, the public art program is more nimble, better resourced and better equipped to deliver on its mission and fulfill its vision for Santa Rosa. So this is a goal about looking internally and saying, how do we become a stronger operation as we think through how we are structured and how we operate? So I'll get into each one of these and just a, um, uh, to give a little bit more specifics. Tari, you can go to the next slide here. So this first goal around diverse voices. Um, the plan is organized with, with three tiers of information. In red and with uh, Roman numerals here, you can see are our, our goals, right? Those five goals I just talked about. Underneath each goal are specific strategies about where we're positioning ourselves and where we're gonna focus to help make it happen. And those are represented with capital letters and in bold. And then underneath that um, are specific tactics, the actual actions we're gonna take to operationalize that strategy in pursuit of that goal. So for this first goal around diverse voices being better represented, there's really two strategies. The first one is to blow the walls out on what we, do, what we consider to be public art. And let's do that in a way that's more expansive and more culturally accessible to the full population in Santa Rosa. The second effort is to ensure that there's more community voice in the commission process. That that's not simply something that is happening to the community, but it really happening with the community and happening with a broader diverse stakeholder group within the community. Um, and really not catering to specific groups, but really trying to say, let's be more representative, let's be more engaged with the entirety of the Santa Rosa community. The second goal, um, which again is focused here about uh, thinking beyond just the, the downtown area and how do we think about other neighborhoods having public art, um, two, two core um, uh, strategies here. The first one is to bring art into areas in the city that don't currently have public art programming. Um, and in line with what we talked about with goal one, I think it's important that we get ourselves out of a mindset of thinking of, oh, that means sculptures, right? That means what neighborhoods don't have sculptures because the first thing we're trying to do is think about public art in far more expansive ways. So this is experiences, it's performances, it's artistic expression in any way. Um, sculpture and, and installments is one option, but there's so many other ways we can bring public art into the city. Um, and the second one here is to empower diverse community leaders to champion and shape arts programming. So this is, let, it's, it's trying to say that we as the public art program or the APPC, um, we know how to run the operations really well, but we don't necessarily know what's best for every community. And we wanna be in conversation and partnership with communities to help them identify what is meaningful and powerful for them and be allies and supporters with them to help them bring that to life. And so we need to be able to build um, these relationships and find these great allies and ambassadors in all of these different communities, help them understand how to leverage what we bring to the table and really work in partnership with them. The third goal, uh, which is focused on um, funding and maintaining public art as a way of placemaking and economic development, two core strategies here. One is to deepen existing relationships with local businesses and, and associations. And two is to better leverage the public art we have and that we can create to drive economic activity. Um, one aspect of this that I think is a, a, a notable departure from our current operations and how we think is a real focus on maintenance. Um, so in addition to being able to build these relationships with, with local businesses and figuring out how we can improve foot traffic, visibility, just the general vibe and economic vibrancy of, of a neighborhood um, is that once we make in investments somewhere and we're doing something, we want to make sure it stays good. Um, we, this is really critical for us staying in good relationship with our artists and with our local businesses. Nobody wants something falling apart outside of their business and no artist wants to see all their hard work going to waste and being ignored. And so making a real effort to actually maintain that work um, and investing accordingly to make sure that we can keep that as sustained economic activity. The fourth goal uh, is, is thinking about how our brand and our relationship with the community, the public art program and APPC, what's our relationship look like with the community? So two core strategies. One, we need to invest in public relations. Um, people are not going to organically just come to us and find us. We wanna be proactive 
and helping people understand who we are and what we do. This also ties to the second strategy about improving outreach and demystifying our processes. Um, obviously, this is a cohesive plan. So these things, you should start seeing a lot of similarities and themes. If we want to bring in new voices to our process, we need to make our process as accessible as possible and to as wide a range of, of stakeholders as possible. So let's make sure that the full community understands who we are and what we do. And let's make it as easy as possible to understand it and to engage. The fifth goal is the one that looks internally. Um, and this is thinking about how do we become more nimble and, and stronger and more sustainable. And again, two core strategies. The first one is to increase opportunities and decrease red tape for temporary projects, allowing us just to be more responsive in the moment. Um, being able to see when communities have a, you know, neighborhoods within Santa Rosa have a need or an opportunity and our ability to move on it much faster than we historically have been able to do. And acknowledging not every project needs to be a permanent installation. We can do temporary things that bring a lot of vibrancy and, and um, cultural relevance to neighborhoods. And the second one is to increase staff capacity and strategic collaborations for public art. Um, it's no secret to you, we have a very, very lean staffing model for the public art program, a very lean staffing model. And this is saying, great, that's, that's wonderful and we can celebrate it, but let's also make sure that we've got the right supports in place, that we're working with the rest of the city in really smart ways, and that we are maximizing the resources that are available to us and the relationships available to us. Now, all of these goals together, you can go to the next slide, Tara. Um, there's some specific things that I think if, if I'm sitting in your shoes as a committee member, I wanna know, all right, what am I getting for this investment? We're gonna spend all of this energy doing something. What would we expect to see be different three and a half years from now than it is today? And these I think are those core, um, those core indicators that something is moving in the right direction. So we'd expect to see projects from a wider variety of art mediums, right? Thinking about public art in more expansive ways and really getting as creative and inclusive with that as possible. Second, we'd expect to see a broader and deeper engagement with and support of artists from diverse backgrounds. The people that engage with APPC, that get funding, that get support from the, the public art program, we want to see looking more like Santa Rosa. We wanna see um, representing a greater diversity of the artists that we have in the city. Um, and really trying to think about how we can make that more and more equitable and more and more inclusive. Third is we'd expect to see an increase in the number of neighborhoods with public art and public art that they're proud of, that they feel represents things that they want, that excite them, that ignite them, that inspire them, and that are meaningful for the people that live there and shop there and do business there and have a relationship with that community. Next, we'd expect to see much deeper relationships between the public art program and the business community. Um, these should be a constant conversation that's continually getting deeper and deeper um, every opportunity. There's such an amazing way that public art can help fuel their agenda and benefit the businesses. And there's such a great way that businesses can help us bring public art to more and more places. And so finding that mutually beneficial agenda and deepening those relationships I think is really key to both public art program and the business community rebounding and coming out stronger after the pandemic and building a much more vibrant city. Next, as I mentioned earlier, we'd expect to see better maintained public art. Installments that go in uh, in you know, one year, really staying strong and staying exciting and staying relevant many years later um, and being able to, to hold our end of the bargain with our local artists to make sure all of that effort that they're putting in is not going to waste and our responsibility with public funds to make sure that we are investing in things and able to keep it good. Next is we'd expect to see greater responsiveness to artists and community needs. So as things like the Black Lives Matter movement or the pandemic or things that really just transform the way people are thinking about themselves, about their neighbors, about their community, public art has to be there for that conversation. We can represent it, we can help market, and we can help fuel it, but only if we're able to be really nimble and creative in how we partner with artists and communities. So finding ways to, to cut down on some of the red tape 
and be able to be more responsive and, and more present with them. And then finally, we'd expect to see greater awareness and support of the public art program and all of the things that the city can do to help support public art. So investing in the strategic plan, these are the results I would expect, you should expect to see three and a half years from now, um, the needle really moving on every single one of these factors. So it comes at a cost. We have to spend money and invest to make this work. So as you can see in the plan, it breaks down the budget in a few different ways. This is the way that I think is probably most helpful, uh, especially for committee members here, is that it breaks this down by year and by sort of the category of what we're investing in. Now you can see the total three and a half year investment is just over $380,000. I wanna note that is a Delta investment on top of our current expenditure plan. This does not replace the expenditure plan. This is designed to enhance the expenditure plan, the current annual plan. Um, we don't spend this all at once, right? This is not just, okay, year one, you, you know, if you vote and approve this tonight, it's not like you have to allocate all this money tomorrow morning. Um, in fact, we've designed this in a way that has almost no financial burden at all on fiscal year 21. In fact, I think that money has actually even come from other places already. And I, Tara, I don't even know, you can probably speak to it better. Is there any of that $2,500 that hasn't already been like reallocated? No, that's really already been dealt with through available funds this year. Um, so we're good for this year. We'd be looking at the next fiscal year as the real start of the but, uh, the uh, expenditure implications. So you can see there's some significant investment in year in fiscal year 22 and fiscal year 23 as we're building out what some of this looks like. Um, and you can see the vast majority of the funds are going to programming and projects. Um, we're also investing heavily around our, our governance and administration to make sure that we can operate as effectively as we possibly can and really thinking through how we, um, how we really support and partner with our community. Okay, that's already too much of me talking at you. I would love to, um, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm happy to help you, if you guys are having a conversation among yourselves to help support that in any way I can. I've got some specific questions I would love to hear from you, but why don't we start with any clarifying questions, either about anything in the plan or anything in the presentation that we just walked through. Do any of the committee members have any questions for Third Plateau? Jonathan, in particular? Jeff? I, I just want to um, uh... You know, compliment you on uh, pulling together um, a lot of information um, from um, many different sources. Uh, and, uh, I, I think the uh, process our committee went through was um, pretty well focused. Um, and it's interesting to see how the uh, strategic planning um, advisory group that you assembled, which um, I think I know everybody in that group. So <laughs> <laughs> it was a great, great uh, team. Uh, the one thing, though, that um, I think I expected to see in this, uh, you know, final um, presentation is that um, there's a lot of talk about uh, community and um, partnering with the business community. But I don't know, maybe I phased out for a moment, but I, I don't think I saw specifically um, partnering with um, arts and cultural organizations. Um, I, I think it's kind of baked into it, but I don't know that it's specifically um, mentioned. And um, as, as a representative here uh, from the museum, um, I, you know, I have a, per, you know, a, a very particular interest in this aspect of it, but I think about all of our cultural uh, partners, you know, throughout Santa Rosa and the county so I just wanted to ask about your thoughts um, regarding you know, that aspect of partner partnerships. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a great thing to flag. I'm, I'm happy to weigh in and would invite um, uh, Tara Reza or, or Member Jones Carter to also weigh in on this. So my short answer is absolutely, I fully agree. Um, I think those relationships are, you know, they're, they're already pretty strong and they can always get stronger, absolutely. Um, and I think the, the arts community um, is really gonna be critical and the arts nonprofit community is gonna be critical for executing on a lot of these strategies. Um, the business community is called out more explicitly because there's a 
there's more room to grow there um, in our relationships and there's more room to grow. I think the two types of relationships that are called out and given more weight in the plan, it's with the business community and with uh, diverse community leaders. And I think the focus there is because that's where the relationships are um, the most, uh, have the most room to grow and I think have the most leverage opportunity if we can get them to be in healthy, strong places. But by all means, to execute on uh, you know, our ability to make sure diverse uh, voices are represented, our arts nonprofits are gonna be key partners in all of that, to make sure that neighborhoods are vibrant with public art, our nonprofits are gonna be key you know, resources in all of that. Um, I'll have to comb through the tactics to see where they're specifically called out. But I think your point is a great point. And they're not, they're not, uh, they're not ignored here. Um, they're just not given the same real estate in the plan that uh, the business community and diverse community leaders are. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just add that I think it is um, almost, um, I don't know, it, it's almost intertwined to a degree that you almost can't uh, necessarily pull it out of this plan, the amount that we do say, uh, to partner with community partners. Um, I mean, I feel like right on the theory of change document, um, it says engage with city departments and community partners to amplify our reach and capacity. Um, under um, goal one, uh, strategy A, tactic two, partner and build stronger relationships with culturally diverse and local and regional community organizations and associations. So. I, you know, if, if there's one thing that maybe we didn't specifically spell out, it would be um, arts organizations, but I feel like, and if that is something that we need to address, we can, but I, I feel like it's addressed by, by, by grouping it with the larger partnership kind of relationship building we will be doing with a broad range of the community nonprofits. And that, that's why I, that maybe it's just baked into the plan. Um, I guess from my perspective, I'd like to see it actually um, articulated in one or more of those, um, uh, you know, tactical points. Um, so it, 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 it's understood in a way if you read between the lines, but it's not specifically stated, I guess is, is you know, what I'm looking at. But anyway, thank you. Other committee members have any any questions? Yeah. Anne, you need to take yourself um, off mute. Oh, sorry. Oh, there you're there. Oh, there. Oh, good. I'm there. Thank you. Um, I'm new to this, so it's really coming in as um, a newer member of Santa Rosa area from Los Angeles. If, for those that didn't meet me earlier, um, one thing I, I love to talk about organizations and community businesses, this and that. But I sort of feel like this is my vibe and I could be wrong, but it feels like, well, A, we're in a really hard time right now, all of us. We're all, you know, cocooned in. So we're going to need to find a way to get back together and reach out and hear each other and listen as a community. But um, in LA, it's just such a generative kind of, um, you, you don't ask permission, you just do. And you just start, <laughs> there's just a lot going on. So what I guess I'm asking is, how can we find the people on the ground doing that are doing things that are actually people that could make some of this move in a way that isn't top down, um, that is more side to side or finding people that are out in communities that actually may not even see themselves in those ways, those kind of empowering sort of things. I haven't done this kind of community you know, direction. So I'm just curious, do you know what I'm actually talking about or could you respond to that kind of, how can we get our fingers into the lower, not, not the top down, but the right across and underneath. So I can tell you raise your hand. Oh, Melanie, you, you go ahead, you're on mute though. Yeah, we talked a lot about in the strategic plan about this committee actually doing a lot of that type of work. Okay. Awesome. Um, we all hear about things on our own. We see the graphics, we see something, but you know, how do we get those and inviting those people, people to our meetings so that we can see what it is they wanna do so we can support them so that other, they can, the message can get out there, you know, um, so, it's it's up to us, really. Right. Yeah, that's where it starts. It's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I'll I'll just add to that that I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of work on many levels that we need to do to make connections to um, other parts of the community, other organizations that are um, better 
equipped to get a message out to invite participation. Um, and so that's another that that's another approach. I mean, I think there's it, it's it's all all hands on deck kind of approach. Committee members, um, staff, um, partnership building. There's a, there's a lot of things that I think can help um, move us forward on that. Right. Um, this is Raisa. Uh, I can also uh, say one of the things that we talked about that's in this plan um, is our interest in um, encouraging the community to understand the difference between public art programs and art in the public realm that they can pursue. Um, and in this way, we've been uh, successful in identifying new community-based members who are not interested per se in going through the formal process of a public art uh, program. However, um, we've been able to enable them and encourage uh, the creation of art uh, that wouldn't otherwise go through our, our program. And so a toolkit is one of those things that's called out, I think, in this uh, plan, but that that is identified in that way as well. Excellent. Yeah. Great. I, wanna, I, I think it's great just to add on an, another piece of this, it really to focus in on, on goal four and goal five um, are really geared towards what you're talking about here. And actually, I'd say one of the key themes overall in this plan is exactly what you're asking for, which is to not take a top-down approach, yeah. right? We, we cannot get more diverse. We cannot get more equitable with a top-down approach. Mm -hmm. And all of the efforts here are about how do we build stronger relationships so that people can leverage us the way that they want to to get the things that they need. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that's a theme throughout the entire document. But right. really zeroing in on, on goal four is about making sure that more people know about us and understand how to leverage us as a resource. And then goal five is about how do we make sure operationally we aren't getting in their way yeah. and that we can, you know, we can vet it appropriately, mm -hmm. but making resources available and support all of these creative efforts from these individuals or small groups that have an idea and want to run with it. And we can really just add fuel to it and, and help them do that. So I think that's very much in the spirit of where this plan came from. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. Kristen? Hi, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I had a question about a specific project that came online in 2020. Um, wondering if there were any lessons learned or any um, successes during the open and out project of the, you know, closing Fourth Street and inviting artists to help beautify the parklets that had been installed out there or, or street closure opportunities, if there were lessons learned there that have informed our strategic plan um, going forward. Kind of wondering how that um, process uh, informed. Uh, well, I think that it, it, that, that program, Open and Out, was a partnership with various groups, including the um, Metro Chamber of Commerce, the Downtown Action Organization, Creative Sonoma, the City of Santa Rosa, Public Art and Economic Development Divisions, um, and then some private um, partners as well. Um, I, I think that it that that itself, just that, that it was a strong partnership um, was a great thing to um, participate in and something that we want to do more of. Um, um, having, you know, the, I think we already had certain goals to accomplish with speeding up some of our processes that are long and lengthy, the red tape we're talking about, especially related to temporary work. Um, we've already been talking about that for a while, but I think Open and Out was a good example of when um, the artist's payments, artist agreements, the contract itself, the commission's uh, process isn't going directly through the city, um, that the process was a little bit faster, well, a lot faster, and um, um, maybe more nimble and able to um, get things done a little bit faster. So that's something else I think we already were aware of, but it worked well in this case. So those are the things that are immediately coming to mind. Great, thank you. Just hearing about the strategic plan goals, I was reminded of some goals of opening out. So I wanted to compare. Do we have anybody else that has any questions? Any other committee members? Okay. Eileen, do we have any public comments regarding no, no. this item? Uh, there are no hands raised at this time. Okay, great, thank you. Is there a motion to adopt this public art program for the, 20, the year 2021 and 2024 strategic plan? 
So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Melanie, you second? Thank yes. you. All right. This is wonderful. So we can go ahead and I'd like to, does anybody have any other um, topics or any discussion they would like to have on this? Sorry about that. You guys just I do have one turned question. off my screen here. Okay. Jeff? I, I just want to say again, uh, I'm impressed uh, by the final uh, product here and thank you all so much. Um, we, it's, it's really strange not getting to be in the same room <laughs> and uh, spend time on this, but um, uh, having been through so many strategic planning uh, processes, uh, I, I appreciate the work. So thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Jeff. Anne. I also just want to say how impressive to, to, to jump on now at this kind of cusp of something really huge, just amazing work. I know that so much more went into it, but um, it's just really beautiful. I had looked at it, but to hear you talk about it really made it come alive and I'm super excited about it. Melanie? Um, so we, we could approve the budget. Is it gonna be realistic? <laughs> Um, so the expenditure plan recommended in there is there, yes, you're adopting this plan, but you're not taking a specific action to set a budget. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, I mean, it, it's still a valid question. Can we afford implementing this plan? Mm -hmm. Um, I will be presenting to you, um, at the next meeting with a proposed annual plan for next year, um, starting J July one, um, which will sh show, that our, um, our implementation of this will be uh, it, the alignment with the current expected expenditures we've seen over the last few years will be right in alignment with this. It will not push us too much farther over. And the reason was that, you know, Jonathan was saying that this is a, um, is, is, this is only in addition, the, the implementing this plan and the expenditures are in addition to our regular programming. Well, a lot of our regular pro programming will take the place of the, some of the items, the projects that we'll be doing within the implementation of this plan. So, you know, no, we're not going to have another huge courthouse square type project on top of implementing this plan, mm -hmm. but um, the projects that we're able to do in, in alignment with um, kind of our normal expected expenditures, keeping in line with the revenue we're seeing coming in um, is very reasonable and very doable. Okay. And um, Tara, if I may, again, this is Raisa. And we are also looking at the uh, economic development uh, division budget as a whole, and again, seeking better alignment between uh, the individual programs, this being one of them. Um, and so we're looking for opportunities related to non-public art program budgets as well. Okay. So Tara, I just, I wanna clarify everything that we've just went over. So every year though, we're gonna um, have, be presented, you know, our yearly, um, our yearly financial amount that we approve each and every year. And that's going to be just like how it is every year, but instead of, a yearly plan, we actually have a four year plan now. And we have this plan that is using around the same amount of funds, but we're directing it in a different way and more of a way that we feel as a group as of right now, that it would be used more wisely than as previously how we used to go ahead and do it. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that to a point. I think that there's, um, you know, having a plan like this changes our focus prior and priorities. Um, it, it shapes a little bit how projects are prioritized. So for instance, um, you know, I, I, you know, I'll use the Cordell Square example again, that, that was a priority because that project was called out on the master plan for Courthouse Square. It had certain funding that had to be used for public art associated with that project. Um, there is a kind of a community expectation that we were gonna fulfill that, that project as a part of the master plan for that space. Um, 
you know, this, this is somewhat similar in, in a way that now we have a four year, three and a half, four year plan that outlines the types of things we should be focusing on and prioritizing over, over other things but it doesn't specifically call out projects like courthouse, you know, it's not a project by project roadmap. And so um, the way that uh, David presented the parking garage project today, that type of project planning process will be similar when we start tackling the projects and programming that you see in that plan, um, in this plan. So there will be a process in which we start saying, okay, we are, you know, this is, um, fiscal year 22 is going to start. We're going to look at what programming and projects um, are a part of this year of our strategic plan. Let's start planning for those projects and we'll, we'll look at um, the types of things that we develop when we um, write out those project plans. So, um, so the funds you know, so, so that's a long way of saying that, you know, there are some additional funds like investing in mar a more uh, PR and um, marketing. Some of those expenses have not existed in our budget. So, but so, so there, there, there are additional expenses to implement this plan. But I guess my point is, is that instead of saying, okay, we have the opportunity to do a certain amount of projects this year, how should we prioritize our projects? That piece is done for us because we can look at the plan and we can say, okay, in this year, this was called out. This is our focus. Here's that budget that we had, um, that we had uh, anticipated for this. And then we start planning that project. So um, I hope that that answers your question. It's a little bit of a puzzle and maybe Jonathan wants to try to clarify that. No, I, I think I, I, I agree with everything you said there, Tara. I just wanted to provide another perspective on this, um, is that you should think about the budget as the volume knob for the plan. You've got your align now on strategies and priorities and the, the how much money you want to pump into it is going to dictate how loudly you do it and how, like, how quickly and what kind of splash it makes. The budget that you see, the expenditure um, implications that you see in the plan are trying to balance and right size what we think is reasonable with also the outcome that we really want and to make it as effective as possible. And so the budget you see is the recommended expenditure of how we think you can get the best bang for your buck um, as you're investing it. But everything that it's on there, you could scale it up even more if you had additional funding. There are ways to find ways, you know, there are ways to do some of those things in a scrappier manner. Um, but what's there in the plan is really like, this is the, it's not the, you know, the platinum version of, you know, everything I'm sure if, if we set Tara and Raisa loose with, okay, what would you want to spend? It would be a lot more than this. This is really trying to gear towards what's the right balance of what we think we can afford, what's justifiable, and what kind of impact you're going to get as a result. But you can turn that volume knob up or down based on whatever funds may or may not be available, but the plan can keep moving forward regardless. I love this. I'm, I'm excited that we finally have a structured plan a process, you know, towards community building and it's long-term, this is great. And then I also like too, that every year we get to like reevaluate what's working, what's not, and maybe make a couple tweaks and some changes. My only, um, uh, just out of curiosity or just what I'm thinking of is, is because unfortunately we do have some disasters and um, some events and here, whether it be fires, whether it be the pandemic, how do we have enough room to be able to mold or to change for those kinds of, you know, events, unfortunate, unseen, you know, events that come up? Happy to at least start to, to weigh on that. I actually think this plan is designed especially with that in mind. This plan makes us far more equipped to be relevant and to help when the context changes dramatically. If you had this plan in place a year and a half ago, you would have seen a much more vibrant COVID response in the art community. You would have seen the art community be even more present um, in the Black Lives Matter movements. I think this is really like a, as the context shifts, this plan make sure that you've got the relationships to actually understand how it's shifting um, and to be on top of that. And internally to have your operations shifted so you're able to move quicker. 
So I actually think while this has a very clear plan about how to support and what to grow, it is designed in a way that makes it far more resilient than maybe what past strategies have been so that we can grow as the context may or may not shift with things like other disasters, hopefully not, or as the pandemic continues or whatever else might come our way that we don't foresee, this plan's able to adjust and actually uh, positions the public art program in a way to be far more uh, resilient and responsive to the community in those situations. I'm ex I obviously hope you don't ever have to do that, but I'm excited that you are better oh. equipped to actually do it should the time come. Wonderful, Jeff? Yeah, and um, just a couple of comments um, because I, I, I thought, Jonathan, your, your answer was right on point. But um, Lisa, you bring up a really, probably one of the most crucial um, uh, topics for us to consider in this community. And it's really interesting to me because um, after the 2017 wildfires, uh, there, there really, um, there wasn't a, a, a public art plan or the museum didn't have a strategic plan and other organizations really didn't have plans for how you respond to that kind of um, disaster. And so what happened is um, we scrambled, but by partnering with Creative Sonoma and organizations in the city, we were able to quickly bring together over 50 people from the cultural sector to talk about response. So in the, in the following year, when the museum went through a strategic planning process, we sort of had that in mind. But you also have to recognize that when things happen that are completely out of your realm of experience, like this pandemic, it also gives you the opportunity to stop and take stock and to look at your plan. Um, actually, uh, Tara and Raisa were just part of a meeting we had for the museum to just go, we couldn't go into phase two of our plan. The pandemic destroyed that possibility. So now what do we do? But at least you have a point of reference. And so I feel good that public art has a reference. And, and when if we have to reevaluate and shift gears, we know um, what the foundation is upon which we're building our, our next plans. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Jonathan, did you have anything else to say? I have, um, I have something else to say sort of after, um, after you guys have a chance to vote before, we, before you kick us off, but I'm, I'm okay for now unless there's other questions people have. Okay. Any other committee members? No? Okay. So then I'd like to call a vote to adopt the public art program for the year of 2021 through the year 2024 strategic plan is presented. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Didn't we already do that? <laughs> yeah. No, Aye. You did for the, the motion. This is for the vote. No. Okay, no. <laughs> Any opposed? No. All right, the motion pa passes. Yay. Yay. Our, yes, the motion passes. I can I, can I jump in really quick? Yes, you can. So first, I just want to say congratulations. That's a massive, like, this is fantastic. And we are thrilled for you. And um, it feels funny to celebrate it with such a, like, with this meeting, to your point, <laughs> we couldn't be in person. But this has been so much work that has gone into this. And it's, um, I mean, this is really months and months of great thinking and, and collaboration. So giant kudos to all of you. Congratulations. And really excited for you. Um, I would also be remiss while I've got your attention to not say something else that I would love to bring to the attention of the committee, which is that the team at Third Plateau and Capital Impact, we get to work with leaders all over the world in every issue area you could possibly imagine. Um, we have worked very closely with Tara and Raisa, and you have got two phenomenally capable, passionate, and collaborative leaders that are spearheading this that give me, this is a nice plan and I have confidence that the plan will be executed and good things are gonna happen because you've got amazing people that are staffing this and running with it. David's also wonderful. We love getting to work with him too. We worked very, very closely with Raisa and Tara and you guys are, I hope you know how truly blessed and special it is to have a staff uh, that's that capable and that strong. It's been a joy to work with them and 
you guys are in very, very good hands. And I'd be remiss to not say it while we've got the space. Oh, thank you so much, Jonathan. I, I <laughs> have to acknowledge that and thank you so, so much for your partnership and your uh, flexibility or just trust that we're gonna make this all work during this odd time. It's not what we set out to, well, it's not the conditions we thought we would be working under when we set out to do this plan. So um, it's been really wonderful working with all of you. Thank you. I hope we get to do other projects in the future. Yes, I would like to say thank you to Third Plateau and to everyone. This, when I read this complete plan, it I just, I was amazed. It looks, there's obviously so much work that went into this and I'm, I'm it's so excited. I could barely contain myself when I would completely read through the whole entire thing, the whole entire plan. So yay. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks again. And we will move on to the next item on the agenda. Great, Step thank you three. all, Jeannie, yes. Alex, Madeline, Maya, thank yeah. you all. Marie, say hi to Marie for us. Anyway, thank you everybody. Thank, thank you. you all, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so let's see here, 5.3 project updates. Tara, you will now present us the updates on current projects. I will, let me find my notes here. Okay. Oh, thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, that was exciting. <laughs> um, okay, so I only have a few very brief project updates um, for today, given we've been a little bit focused on a few other things. So um, to let you know, the Imagine Art and Old Courthouse Square project, the Courthouse Square project, we are still working on finalizing the artist services agreement with the artist, the selected artist, Blessing Hancock, um, and going back and forth with our uh, city attorney's office. So we will be working um, to get that started as soon as we do the final signing of that document. I'll let you know um, what that will do to our timeline. It has now, we, we were hope, hoping to get that done this week. If that pushes out too much farther, uh, it'll probably push our timeline back by a week or so, um, but that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, the Depot Park Public Art Project, which some of you will remember from many, many years ago, um, it looks like we may have the opportunity to revisit that project um, finally after, I think it's been about a three year hiatus. So uh, we had a meeting last week um, that looks like we're, we're, there's some interest in looking at how we can combine some landscape, uh, refreshing of the landscaping and looking at placing that art, art piece again, working with the artist again. So I will keep you updated on that and let you know um, if there's an opportunity to present more details on that. That's the only update I have at this point. Um, and then for conservation and maintenance, we are looking um, at what we need to accomplish in our next round of um, repairs and cleanings and maintenance um, on our current uh, existing collection of public art, probably slated to start this spring. Um, so I will be reporting back to you on which pieces will be um, worked on and uh, share, share some before and after photos uh, the next time we have that ready. So really that's all I have uh, today. If anyone has any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them, but that's, um, those are the only project updates I have. Does anybody have any questions? Can you return to that first one, the Imagine Art? Um, is that a person's name you gave? I didn't, I just couldn't catch it. Yes, sorry. And um, the the selected artist is Blessing Hancock. Okay, that's right. First thought. name Blessing, um, last name Hancock. So uh, you can find out more about that project um, on our website and see her, her proposed piece. Um, it's all on the Imagine okay. Art website. Great. Um, but yes, that's, that's her name. Thanks. M Melanie. Yeah, I, I had a question, um, not about projects, but you said we would be looking at the budget the next meeting. Yeah, okay. most like, yeah, most likely I will pro provide you with, um, our, an annual plan, which will essentially, um, mimic the year, the first year implementation of the, um, strategic plan. Um, but I'll prepare what I normally prepare for that. Uh, however, because of how we're, we're moving forward with implement, implementing um, the strategy now, the, you'll see when I, when I um, put together the plan, usually I break it down by project. 
This time it will probably be strategy based rather than individual project. And then we will do the development we need to on each project as we move forward. Um, so it might have a slightly different format, but yes, I will be bringing that to you at the March meeting. So last year, I remember we voted right there at the meeting. Is there any opportunity for us to see a draft of the plan before the budget before the meeting? Or no? So it usually gets sent out with the agenda. So, but but if you'd like it sooner than that, and that you, I try to get that to you um, five or so days before. Okay. Um, but I can I can try to get it out sooner than that if you'd like more time. Okay. It was my first time last time. I just was like, oh, we're voting oh. right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll make sure you you have a chance to review it. Um, okay. Lead time. Jeff. Yeah. Um. So I was just wondering if there's an update on the Ruth Asawa um, fountain, uh, that installation. So. Yeah, thanks for asking, Jeff. I hopefully by March, um, by the next meeting, I'll have another, I'll have more to share on that. Right now, I can tell you, I actually don't know if there's any update on the starting of construction of the fountain itself. I haven't heard anything um, in a while. I've been relying on um, a couple sources to give me updates on that, and I haven't heard any movement. Um, I know they want to get started as soon as possible, but I don't have any uh, news on that in terms of timing of construction. Um, for the artwork side, we are in conversation with our conservator, our structural engineers, um, the, the family of Ruth Asawa about um, how best to move forward with the project given how fragile the original panels are. So um, when I come back to you in March, that is the, going to be the focus of our conversation is um, some options we're looking at for uh, how best to make sure the panels prosper on into the future. That is the number one question I get from anybody. It's coming back. The The panels <laughs> and the fountain will be back in the square. <laughs> I just can't tell you exactly when. When was it taken out? Let's see, the when square, the reuni square was, was reunified. Yeah, it was 2016 <laughs> and 17. 2016, okay. Was the, and from my sources, I think the best information for a, a, a timeline or a schedule for construction that would probably come from the downtown action organization. That's who I've been tuning into for information about the Ruth Asawa fountain. So I keep telling people, no, it's not our job. <laughs> they, have monthly, they have monthly meetings where the Ruth Asawa fountain uh, is a regular standing agenda item. So. <laughs> And, and I also wanted to just chime in. I uh, think we missed the opportunity for community member or committee member reports, but I wanted to applaud some of our neighbors. Um, oh, let's let's wait oh, till we get next. to that item on oh, the agenda. Sorry. We're not quite there no, yet. It's no worries. <laughs> I won't forget. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. So that, that's all for project updates, and I will bring more more information about those other questions. Um, okay. Next. I had a question, Tara, but um, I know you're limited on information on this, so if you don't have the information, but regarding the depot, when you just said that, um, are we still considering the same artist that was previously approved and for the same design? We still have a valid contract with that artist, um, uh, James Den, and so, you know, he, he, we would like to revisit that project talk to him about, you know, is, if he's still available to move forward with this, we have a contract with him. There are, the funds are kind of, you know, earmarked for that project. Um, so so the, there, things have changed so much since then. There's a lot of interest in seeing some other developments at Depot Park. Uh, we're gonna, yeah, like I said, I really don't have enough information to share back much more detail than that, okay. um, other than we're gonna start revisiting it and see where it goes. But he's still a consideration. Well, we have, we, yeah, okay. he's the selected artist for that project. Okay. We just need to yes. start the conversation over again. Okay, I just wanna make sure we're not starting completely over on that. Okay, perfect, thank you. So let's, so now we can move on. Next item on the agenda is number six, committee member reports. Um, do any of the community members wish to make a report at this time? If so, please physically raise your hand. <laughs> Kristen. Thanks, Lisa. Sorry, I got excited. 
Um, I just wanted to commend a few of our neighbors in uh, the downtown community who unfortunately have had vandalism or uh, accidents that you know they couldn't predict or prevent and has altered the facade of their buildings. And two examples that I can think of, uh, when they put up the plywood in front of a window that had been broken, reached out to local artists to beautify the space. So if you haven't seen the rotating murals that are at Hot Couture, um, and then uh, Shady Oak Barrel House, they unfortunately had some vandalism, but uh, Dom Chi, local artist, painted a beautiful set of murals there. So I wanted to commend our resilient community and not lose sight of those art artistic opportunities that are happening um, without our committee, um, without our committee's role. So that's, that's exciting to see. Thanks, Kristen. Jeff? Um, first of all, Kristen, thank you for mentioning that because I, I think that's um, really great when um, the commun community members and businesses uh, partner with artists. Um, just, you know, e even flying by the seat of their pants. It's, it, it's really great. Um, anyway, I just wanted to um, bring to uh, everybody's attention a couple of things that the museum is doing. Um, uh, in our virtual programming next week on Wednesday, we are uh, presenting a panel discussion, Women in Policy and Politics. This is in conjunction with our um, uh, suffrage from, um, from Suffrage to Me Too exhibition that you can see online. And the panelists are Natalie Rogers, who is the new, newly elected uh, councilwoman, uh, Suzanne Smith and uh, Dr. Cynthia Boaz from uh, Sonoma State. So it's next Wednesday, February 10th at 7 p.m. And you can get the information either from um, our uh, weekly e-newsletter -new that goes out tomorrow or on our website. And then a couple of weeks later on Thursday, February 25th, we're presenting the program Collective Arising, a positionality of insistence from Black Bay Area artists with um, our co-presenters. These are actually uh, visiting guest curators for an upcoming exhibition. Uh, Shara Ekendayo from uh, Oakland and Lucia uh, Momo, who is a um, assistant curator at the Berkeley Art Museum. So um, both really important and exciting upcoming uh, virtual programs. Um, I will also, um, I would just like to say before we adjourn our meeting, I would love to um, take a couple of minutes to um, more officially welcome uh, our new, newest member, Anne. It's well, thank uh, you. nice to have you join us. Congratulations. Thank yeah, thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. Is that it? Do I have anyone else? So we'll go, go ahead and we'll move on. There's one more item, department reports. Tara, do you have anything for department reports? Yeah, just briefly, um, as, as you heard me say at the beginning of the meeting, obviously we have um, some membership changes on the committee. So I just wanted to share a little bit of some of the um, uh, process going on there. Um, so due to the shift in, uh, Due to the shift to council district elections, some council appointments to city boards, committees, um, and commissions are going to be aligned by districts as a default. But there are and there's other considerations as well, such as maintaining continuity with current members and or chairpersons. So, um, so last week there was a process where council drew names of their two newest new newly elected members. So they could determine which of the old, no longer seated council members who, that, whose, whose appointees would replace whose appointees essentially uh, on all the city boards and commissions. So that may also be changing some of the membership on our public places committee. I'll, I'll provide more information when I can. Some of those things are still in flux as um, one of the new members still has not appointed any anyone to APPC yet. So. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that there are things going on that, um, that kind of 
affect boards and commissions and committees across the city when there's an election and especially because we are moving to the district elections. The council members are uh, elected by district now. So Bryce, is there anything else you wanna to add to that? I kind of just wanted to mention um, that that is something that our department is working on. And no, I think you said it uh, well, Great. but if there's any questions, we can answer those. Okay. That's it. Okay, thank you, Tara. Thank you, Raisa. Um, so only thing we have left now is adjournment. Um, the next regular meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee is scheduled for Monday, March 1st at 3.30. The meeting is now adjourned. Nice. Thanks. Great. Thank, Bye, you, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great yes. to see you all. And yeah. uh, Anne, nice to meet you. Yeah. Well, hopefully nice to meet you in person you sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Gosh, terrific. All right. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Wonderful. Have a good night. Right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Okay. <laughs>